Previously on the Carbide Camp Knife series, a last minute decision to engrave our blades gave them some distinctive identification. Then it was off to the forge where we heat treated the blades by bringing them to a cherry red glow. A quick quench in canola oil locked the steel into a hardened crystalline state, and then two tempering cycles in the oven reduced the brittleness of the steel. Now we have to turn our attention away from the blades to work on some scales for the carbide camp knife. With the freshly hardened blades finished up, the only things left to machine are the scales that will make these knives comfortable to hold. Here, my material of choice is G10, a composite made of compressed fiberglass and resin. It's tough, dimensionally stable, and inert. It won't swell or crack when exposed to the elements. I have my fusion models of these scales set up next to each other with just enough room for an end mill to pass between them. The first thing I'll apply is some boring operations to machine the holes for my handle hardware. One for the counterbore, one for the through hole. Next, I'll use a 3D pocketing toolpath to rough away the material around the scales. I'm all about adaptive toolpaths, but with the way I'm containing my toolpaths, going around the outer profile of these scales with an adaptive is going to be extremely inefficient. My machining recipe is as follows. 10,000 RPM, 45 inches per minute, a step over of no more than 0.1 inches, and a 0.03 inch depth of cut. Next, while I still have my 102 8 inch flat end mill installed, I'll profile around the outside and clean up the vertical walls that a ball end mill can't reach unless I let it rip into my wasteboard, which I don't want to happen. Just before I do my 3D finishing, I'll bore out the lanyard hole with a 1 16th inch end mill. Then a scallop toolpath is draped over the model to contour the surface. Step over is 5 thou or about an eighth of a millimeter. And I should note that I'm leaving about 3 to 4 thou of radial stock to leave. This is to account for any slop or other sources of inaccuracy in my fixtures. The pinholes I machined for my stations were all interpolated. I didn't ream them so they aren't perfectly round and snug. Every subsequent operation I performed on my knives could have introduced a thou or two of inaccuracy. Because G10 is easier to sand than steel, if anything was going to sit proud, I wanted it to be the G10. That stock to leave was my insurance policy. Now that we have the cam stuff all squared away, it's CNC time. The first rule of working with G10 is don't breathe the dust. It's basically fiberglass, so you don't want to get it in your lungs and you want to try to avoid getting it on your skin. The best thing to do would be to machine it with a dust boot like we can do on the Shape Oko, but I want these scales to fit as precisely as possible on the knife. Most importantly, the holes in the handle need to match the knife scales exactly. So I want to machine the scales on the same machine that milled the blade. That way, I don't need to worry about the positions being ever so slightly off between the blades holes and the scales holes. So, in order to capture any airborne particulates on the Nomad, I'm clamping a vacuum hose to the front of my Nomad's table and turning off all other ventilation in the room so that there's no air currents in the room that might prevent the vacuum from capturing everything within about a 6 inch radius of the hose. Also, though it might be self-explanatory, it's best to use a vacuum that's HEPA rated here. Safety matters settled, I went through my toolpaths slowly shaping my scales. At first, I wasn't sure how the Nomad would react to the G10, or if my feeds and speeds would be appropriate, but treating the material like a harder cousin of acrylic put me in a pretty good range. The first scale ended up really smooth, some might say too smooth, but I'm not really a texture connoisseur. I just wanted something that would look good on a knife. As my scale machining progressed during roughing, I noticed the noise levels coming from the Nomad growing over time. By the fourth set of scales, it sounded so bad I was worried enough that I slowed down my feed rate. When my Nomad limped across the finish line, I took a closer look at the end mill and saw that the cutting edge had been noticeably blunted by the G10. The rate at which my end mill had been worn and rendered useless was actually more impressive than what I'd observed machining steel. The glass fibers in G10 really do a number on end mills. There's really no reason you shouldn't be using solid carbide end mills on most desktop machines, but this is one case where you shouldn't even bother considering cheap high speed steel tooling. They will wear down even faster. To attach my scales to my knives, I first lightly scratched up the interfacing surfaces with some sandpaper. Then I dabbed on some epoxy, smearing it around the perimeter of the handle and around the holes to allow epoxy to form a watertight seal just in case there was a gap between the G10 and the steel. Then I pinned one of the scales in place with corby bolts from one side while I attended to the other side. Some people would say that you should use a slower curing epoxy because it's stronger, 
but unless you plan on pulling some type of Bear Grylls level stunt where your life depends on a knife handle not delaminating on you while you stress it far beyond the bounds of reason, 5 minute epoxy will be just fine. When you have the scales on, tighten the Corby bolts with a pair of screwdrivers. While the epoxy cures, you can wallow in your regret and misery for choosing stainless steel Corby bolts. While these are really strong fasteners that won't rust, they're also much more tedious to shape. My lack of a bandsaw, much less a bandsaw with a metal cutting blade, meant that I had limited options for trimming down these bolt heads. I ended up using a metal cutoff wheel on a Dremel, switching back and forth between bolt heads so as not to overheat the epoxy. Once I'd reduced the bolt heads down to about an eighth of an inch, I switched to a belt sander with the coarsest grit I had, which was 220 grit. And eventually, I brought the Corby bolts flush to the face of my scales. In doing this, I discovered a bit of a problem. The internally threaded side of my Corby bolts was actually drilled out deeper than I expected, and in the rearmost bolt, I ended up sanding into this cavity. I had no choice but to fill this hole with epoxy and move on. After that, I sanded the handles flush to the profile of the knife and smoothed things over with some fine grit sandpaper by hand. And now, these were starting to look like proper knives. But they still need to be sharpened, and if I didn't make sheaths for these knives, someone would probably end up getting stitches. So those two exigencies, as well as tying up the last few loose ends, will be taken care of in the final episode of the Carbide Camp Knife series. 